interesting. Um, yeah, so I did work in Hollywood for a while. So I did several different things. I was a TV executive uh, uh, producing uh, TV shows and movies inside one of the large companies. And then I was also ran an interactive television company, uh, which worked with all the TV networks. So I, I understand that side of the business. Now, right now, we're seeing a shift. As you, you all know, everything's going online, which is a great opportunity, uh, especially for us here in Silicon Valley. Uh, the, the building a brand, I mean, there's different ways to build a brand. There's a ways to build a brand around content specific. There's ways to build a brand around a platform, you know, for content distribution. The companies that become, you know, the biggest unicorns, the best investments are platform plays. Let's face it, they're building a platform, they're aggregating content. Now a lot of them, like Netflix, are producing their own original content as a differentiator because they need to lock in customers and they need to give them away. Why, why would they go there and not somewhere else to get the content? Uh, for your content, uh, uh, what you want to do, I mean the most important thing about building a brand when I coach startups is telling a story. So why, and it's not just any story, right? It's why does your, why does your brand matter? Why does your content matter? What's it, what's it doing in the world that will affect people? Will it change how they think? Will watching your content like open up our eyes to a world or ideas we didn't know? Or will it have a big impact on society? in a specific way, will be help, how will it be helping people, right? Uh, will, will, uh, what will this be doing? Uh, and so when you craft your story, so storytelling is the biggest thing you can do in building your brand. And that means um, thinking, there are different types of stories. So I write a lot about this. Um, there are uh, many different types of stories and you need to figure out what your story is. So. There's stories about you personally, like what inspired you to connect with this dolphin, right? What did it mean to you personally, and could people relate to that? Uh, there's stories about, uh, you know, dolphins are supposed to be, you know, as intelligent as human beings, which we don't know, right? But they're supposed to be very intelligent, one of the more intelligent animals out there, and we, but we don't know how intelligent they are. We've got clues as to this um, from the research and interactions that have been done, but if you have a deeper insight into this, it could be a great story. Like, I'm fascinated by dolphins just because I want to know how smart they really are. I want to know what they're really communicating when they talk between each other. I've heard some amazing stories in the past, but if you've gone to the next level and can show us, that's a great story. If you're working on saving dolphins, I know that a lot of dolphins are slaughtered in the, you know, the fishing industry, the mass fishing industry. You know, they kill so many dolphins a year indiscriminately and not on purpose just because they get caught on these, you know, in these fishing nets and these, these lines. Um, if you're going to tell that story, that's another story you can tell. So what you want to do when you're building a brand is a smart entrepreneur experiments with stories. So they try different stories on the media um, to see what resonates. Because certain stories go viral, it means they have caught, you know, they've uh, captured our imagination. And that happens at certain times. Like the same story uh, that went viral already in the past probably isn't that interesting now. It's not going to go viral. If it's, it's usually something new and that people that captures everybody's imagination or it piggybacks on a trend that's happening. You know, a big trend. We see these trends as they sweep the world um, and they, you know, blockchain is a story. Let's face it, right? Uh, it became the story. And why did it become so big? Well, first it started with a, a small nucleus of people who were uh, truly true believers, right? They wanted to change the world. Uh, they wanted to decentralize currency. They didn't believe in big government, uh, and they had their, their ideology and everything else. And that story was really powerful. But what really made blockchain take off was the story of all of a sudden, when it hit the mainstream, it was when Bitcoin started to increase exponentially in value. You know? 
And let's face it, most people jumped on the blockchain bandwagon without really understanding the technology, without really caring about the politics underneath, but really excited by the idea that, wow, I could get, like, I could put in $1,000 now and end up a millionaire? <laughs> you know, that story that, you know, these early blockchain investors, you know, they bought it for, you know, a few cents and now they're, like, worth billions. You know, that story is what, like, actually went totally viral around the world and that generated all these ICOs and everything else. Now, that's just one type of story. Um, there are many, many types of stories you can tell. I don't know your, I haven't watched your, uh, uh, all your footage and I don't know it well enough, but what you want to do is, uh, if you look, if you do research on this, there are certain sites like Upworthy.com, you know, this, the viral news uh, site or, or uh, BuzzFeed. What they do now is they, they, they have a technique, and I will tell you their technique. They don't actually know what stories will go viral. So, but they need virality. That's their whole business model is predicated on how to go viral, right, with their stories. So this is their technique. What they do is they get their, their they have a brainstorming session where they ask different people in the company. They, they know that this topic is going to be hot, right? And then they ask people to come up with 25 headlines for the topic. So they might get three people in the room and they're coming up with what are the best headlines we can use, you know? And they have all these rules for what makes really good headlines, you know? Because let's face it, people read the headline and they're either going to, it's going to resonate with them or they're on to the next one. We know, we go through a little like flipboard or whatever app you're using to scan the news and you're going through headline after headline and then some catch you and you go deeper. So they're looking for the ones that catch you. And they have rules like uh, be clear about what you do, don't try to be too clever. There are all these different rules they have, you know, uh, about writing headlines. And so they come up with their headlines, they're 25. Then they get together as a group. They might come up with the headlines separately. They get together as a group and they pick the four best. And then the four best, what they think are the four best, then they run tests on those. They put them out in a limited way on social media and other things, and they see which ones people are liking, right? Which ones people are clicking through on. And a lot of times, the ones that people respond to are not the headlines they would have chosen, right, as, as the winner. So uh, they're often surprised, they say. And then when they find one that's really clicked, then that becomes the real headline. And that's the one they go out big with. So with your story, it's the same way. A headline is just a story, right? It's what attracts people to read your story, which is the most important, it's the summary of your story. So when you're coming up with a story, you don't want to just say, this is our story because I like it, right? If you really want to gain virality and build a brand, you have to figure out uh, what people respond to. But then the story can't just be random. It can't be ancillary to your business, right? It has to reflect the core message that you're conveying with your content, the core that you want your brand to represent. Because if the story is off point, a lot of people may click on it, but it won't do you much good. It won't translate into, at the end of the day, into uh, the type of engagement that you want. So if you really want people to engage with your brand and understand your brand, then you not only have to have it be viral, but you have to have it uh, you have to have it perfectly reflect the values and the content that you're pushing. So that's my advice. That's a long answer to your question. <laughs> okay.